So uh, my name is Tong. Uh, I'm principal scientist. I work at the Xerox Research Center at Rochester, New York, so pretty close here, three hours drive. Um, so uh, my role is uh, uh, I'm also managing a machine learning research uh, group in the Xerox Research Center. We do uh, social media analytics and big data. I'm also driving a corporate-wide uh, big data initiatives, uh, so from, uh, from research organizations to drive that initiatives as well. Uh, I will briefly talk about it. So my, my topic today is really um, focus on the, how the social media, what is the things we're looking at the social media, especially from one aspect, how the information diffuse in the social media, which impact the people's behavior, especially when purchasing, uh, in, on the purchasing consumer side of it, and also customer, ca customer care side of it. And so it's, it's the whole loop of the value chain of the customer value. Okay, so go next slides. So I know... Um, Everyone knows this. Uh, this is a very recent uh, statistic on the social media, right? Uh, just last year, a lot of people really questioned about Facebook, what it has an impact on purchasing. So in a, during a survey, nearly 70% of the respondents said Facebook has no impact on their purchase behavior. This year, it was jumping to 47% of the people agree the activity at the social book actually impact their purchasing behavior. And also, social media is not for the young kids anymore, right? The average age at the social media is increasing. And also, another trend is social and mobile go hand in hand. So this is kind of the key trends I want to look at. So um, um, this is, I know the previous uh, talks, talks about governance. The activity at Facebook is something related to privacy, right? So this is the things we, we all recognize it. So, but the thing is we have to look at what is the potential things already exposed there, which, which we was looking at from a research perspective, what activity driving the current, what is the evolution path of the, when the consumer behavior is changing along these two medias of the interactions? Next slide. So, this is also uh, part of the uh, research we did on the July 20, uh, 20, uh, uh, last year. It's about activity on the Facebook. So being active at the Facebook pays off. This is for the brand. So the, uh, what is the result coming out is the f fan page. When, you, when there's a brand pages on the Facebook, when you like it, that, then you become to a fan. That was can fan for. If you are a fan of a brand, you will likely 135 percent more likely to visit on the brand's online store, okay? And then the, not, then the members on the Facebook who never like that brand. And if you are the Facebook members and you have more than 600 percent likelihood to go to the website, the brand website for purchasing behavior, then you, are, you don't even have a Facebook account member. So this is time things show you even the people who in, doesn't interact with the ad Advertisement. So most of us maybe ignore the ad advertisement on your social media, on your Facebook page, but you still have more times, four times more likely to visit online likelihood. So it's really not just about the interaction, or it's about the like, it's about the behavior um, changes on the line. Next slide. Is there any way I can click? Okay, is this the one? Oh, okay, good, good. So Pinterest, have any of you hear about the Pinterest? Is another social media. Yeah, I know a lot of women knows. That's good. It's dominated 80% of the users is women, females in the Midwest, yeah, Americans. So it's primarily based on images. So a lot of attractive graphic things. And the recent survey talk about 32% of that surveyed respondent have made a purchase after seeing the image. Out of 32%, actually it's 26% of them directly to click that images going to the online purchasing. 6% of them actually have to go there, search separated because the image didn't directly linked. So that is very, very a significant trend in terms of social behavior driving the purchase decision. Okay. So then if you look at the uh, if you are a marketing professional, if you are sales organizations, if you are thinking about how you reach out to your customers on the social media, don't treat them equally. Because social media conversation, as I mentioned, 
actively influence the purchase. This is another um, hotspot, uh, is another uh, social media marketing um, company in Boston. They did a survey. So 38, more, almost around 40% of the behavior driven by the, because when you purchase things from your online friends, not your real world friends. Okay, so treating them, your customer basis actually is in equivalent in terms of the influence. So some customers' adoptions and opinion have a disappropriate influence on other adoptions. So there's a word, target the influencer, you can move the crowd. So you have to understand who is the influencer for your brand. Then you, you ask him more, how can I find them? Who are the positive influencers? Who are negative influencers, right? Who are my competitors' negative influencers? Because that could be your potential, your customer. So this is all the questions, can, you know, driving you. If you want, you have a question, want to, how, how can I reach out? Who are the community out online, which is, would be potentially could be my customer, or could be my influencer, or could be, the influencer doesn't have to be your customer, doesn't have to be previously purchased your stuff. He could be a prospect, who, but you know you can really engage in them. Think about more broadly. So the social media give you this uh, channel of the information so you can extract value for your purpose. So this is my main, um, this is what we kind of the research thought process going through. So now what is social influence? I know this is kind of the buzzword. Everybody talking about influence, influencer. What does it really mean? So this is the definition. A lot of sci uh, social scientists and psychologists are doing this kind of social influence analysis. So the definition is really about your thoughts and the feelings and your actions, okay? Maybe influence individuals, the people's thoughts, feelings, actions, but influenced by some people or some image, some imagined presence. Okay, so this is influence. So what we want to focus on, there's a different factors of the influence. There's a conformity, you know, you want to fit in, in your environment, or you have a peer pressure, and there's a leadership, and obedience, authority, obedience, you have to, you know, follow certain leaders, and persuasion. So there's all different kinds, this is all social scientists, uh, the things. So what does that mean for online social network? So what we focus on, this is, we focus on action. Action means I need to be able, so one of the key challenges in social media is hard to measure, hard to track. If this person buy this product, where did it come from? What drive is it coming to me? It's very hard to track. What things you can really looking at actions in the social media, likes, comments, click on the links, right? This thing, we have to focus on actions. That's something you can measurable. So you buying a product is action, joining the community is action, you visit the website is action, and you're publishing in the conference, things like that, even in my tag, like it's even you, I tweet. So I say, I'm going to Toronto to present um, a talk. Even the, in my words, actually I say uh, actions. So I, I need to be able to understand this person went to this location for this time frame, what he, she did. So this could get into this fine granule, okay? So um, another thing, we're looking at the fundamental, I'm a researcher, so I, I'm looking at what fundamentally model behind it. So it's really the influence, how you model the influence. Influence is really the probability, the likelihood. If agent who performs A is called active, agent is, could be a human, right? If I like this brand, means I'm active, my state is active. So if I, when I like my friend, my, uh, like a brand, my friend saw me that post, I like it, on the newsfeed in the Facebook, how likely I will influence he or she to join that, to like that brand. So it's a likelihood, it's a probability. Who defines this probability? The likelihood is the trust, is the link, the, the strength of the link between two of us and also the interest, how much would be fit into his interest. So it's about the linkage in your relationship, it's about the similarity in your interest. So there's a different ways to looking at it. So what I really want to do is, a lot of study, if you're looking at a study, is all the correlation, oh, people obesity tends to be uh, propagate or contagious behavior, right? If you, uh, if you, um, be friend with the people who has obesity and you are likely to be a friend. So it's more correlation. You find a lot of it's correlation, like a back pain, right? Some people say have a back pain uh, in the, when the, 
when the war between the East Germany and the West Germany fall, actually the back pain was, was actually you, the whole, everybody has a back pain, most, very likely in the population in both East German and West German. There's a correlation with that event. Is that cause? Is that because of the fall co collapse caused this back pain? We don't know. So correlation is not causality. So I, I know a lot of audience here may not be technical uh, community, but what I like to share is something a little bit deeper in the certain things you read or blog, you, t you, you read on articles about these things. Think about it deeper. What is driving this whole thing? Okay, that's the whole purpose I want to share this uh, kind of the insight, what we're getting into. So it's about causality. Who caused who? It's not correlation. Correlation is easily to find. Causality is hard to find. Okay. So now, the billion dollars question is, bring me the influencer. How can you find me the influencer? So there are so many startups in the Bay Area, you can count it. So the class score, how many know the class score? The class score peer index is top two. They can give you, a, based on your activity on tweets, on your LinkedIn, on your Facebook, they give you a weekly update from zero to 100. So like Obama has like 98, 96, right? And Justin Bieber actually, a year ago, Justin Bieber class score is more than Obama. And now this year they change the algorithm. They want to add in their method to calculate the offline real world influence into the online influence, right? So they are changing their model for that. Another thing, interesting things, how, why they can make money out of it, Cloud. So um, people using Cloud score in the Las Vegas hotel, if you go Las Vegas, you will get free night stay if your Cloud score is over 60. You show me, when you check it out, right? When you check it out, if you show me your class score, this week's class score is over 60, you pay one night less. Because, why? Because they think this guy is very active in Twitter or Facebook. He will likely to mention this because you delighted him, right? He will be likely to mention that. That's your potential channel of your communication. So this is how People using this kind of the things, right? In real world, this is not just a research paper, okay? So very simple algorithm. They are going beyond the number of followers. That's why at the beginning, Justin Bieber is so high because he has a millions, millions yeah. of followers, right? And he tweets and somebody helped him to tweet and a lot of people retweet it. So they not only looking at the, how many followers you have, how often you tweet, but also when you tweet, somebody retweeted. Somebody mentioned you in their tweets. So that's kind of the, the algorithm they put into space. So then what we doing, what Xerox doing, what we doing researching this, what we can help Xerox do business around this. We have to find a niche innovation, value added differentiation in this space. How we did it, I'm just going to quickly share you how to, I'm going, not going to do the algorithm part, but I want to show you this thing. So things we look at it, very different perspective. Everybody know this is the, how the disease was propagated how the rumor was propped. Because we, one of the things we want to focus on is really find out um, a lot of brands may not be famous, may not be like a huge brand like iPad, Apple, small company, small business, how they're building their brand. Their influencer is not a celebrity. How, it's very hard to find. How did you find them? You have to really focus on what is the topic around that brand. Who is the influencer? The influencer here could be because if you are working with marketing campaign, they have a specific measure of return on investment. I want to conduct this campaign for my car, the new car model, like Ford, like GMC, right? Uh, I want to conduct this campaign for a week for next quarter sales. They have, a, they have a time frame. So in this time frame, they want to see if I do marketing campaign, I want to reach as much as possible. I want people to take as much as possible actions. They want to measure these things. So you need to figure out the diffusion. How, if you pick up the influence user, how quickly his information will be diffused in terms of cascading in the network, not just beyond his immediate friend. Friends, 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 friends. Things like that's the diffusion. So we're looking at how the, the disease propagate. If this node is, is a human, if N1 is one human he infected by a disease, a virus, Right? So how likelihood he will be connect, will be in fact, pass that disease to end if they are family member, right? The link means their relationship, social relationship, whether they are friends or they are family member, relative, their colleague, the coworkers. So there's a likelihood of that, um, the likelihood of their in, impact, infected that disease. It really depends on how close that link is, right? What, what I'm talking about, the strength of that link. And 
whether this N will get that disease, what does that mean? That means how immune he is, right? How immune he is. And the other thing is, you, you have to look at the threshold of the end, how easily he adapting to this new virus, right? Getting infected. Another thing is the strength of the virus. Very simple model. So how can we do that into a marketing campaign a scenarios? The, look at the link. The likelihood of this beta is really about your strength of link. Think about the trust, the interaction with, the, with your friends, and how often you interact. What's the tie relationships on that? You can model that. Okay, you can capture mining that, do the data mining. And the threshold, um, that person, how behavior adoption, is this the person early adopter? If, for example, if I'm looking at other people's tweets, how quickly I retweeted them? Or if somebody new hashtag come into the place, how easily, how quickly I uh, using, reusing that hashtag, because this is reusing is adaptions, ad adaption of this hashtag. And about this uh, virus threshold, it's about your product novelty. Is this a new product? If it's something new, that means, or if it's a high end, right? If it's like iPhone, if you do an iPhone type of uh, product versus you do a boots, right? If you have, you know, the winter boots, the, the product novelty is very different. Boots, everybody knows boots, you just have different style. But iPhone, if it's a disruptive technology, it's a new thing, that's going to be impact how you model that. So just take away from these three things. How the information diffuse is based on your linkage, the strength of the linkage, and your behavior adoptions, how quickly you can adopting things from your friends. Another is a product novelty. Okay, any questions so far? I know I'm, I'm, I don't want, you know, I'm going, okay. So another diffusion model we look at is they call diminishing return or critical mass. This is very similar, like a, uh, this, a, the, this marketing study can be done uh, for many different products, like for iPhone, uh, most of it is a critical mass because you, you, ha you have a friend, one friend bought a new iPhone, or right at the beginning, iPhone is a new thing because nobody real, really, everybody got used to BlackBerry, right, with a keyboard. All of a sudden, iPhone coming out with no keyboard, everybody was like, is that will be success? Everybody's doubtful about that, right? So actually, iPhone will not be, because of one of the friends buy, I will likely to buy. Actually, I will wait, I will wait, wait, because it's a new product. Nobody knows. I usually wait for like 80% or 50% of my friends already have an iPhone that I would likely to adopt. So you need to have to understand what type of the product you are doing campaign, what kind of the reactions you have to predicting on that. And if you look at this curve, this also tell you the early adopters. Who would be your early adopters? This curve. All right, so you have to identify the influence in many different contexts. When you try to say, I want to know who is influencer, for what purpose, you have to ask yourself, for what purpose? Influencer meant differently with, with a different purpose. This is what we, we did. So in the knowledge community, for example, a uh, forum, if you have a questions, you like Microsoft, they have a lot of Microsoft, or um, if you're technology, if you're uh, debugging, you, you, know, you write a certain code, you, uh, you have issues with Microsoft product, you go to their forum. Right, the people who expert answer the forum. How we find the influencer? Influencer is expert who knows answer most of your questions right, and that's expert. What about new product? I talk about early adopters. Early adopters is the key to drive your new product successful. Awareness campaign. So awareness campaign adopters versus call to action adopters. This is something I want to show you. This is a very simple graph we we did online from Twitter. All right, each dot is is a Twitter account. The link is follower following. This link could be your friends or could be interaction. This guy tweets, I, I reply to it or I retweet it. Could be link, could be any different types of link. So what this tell you, there's a two community showing up from graph theory perspective. There's a communi community here. There's a community here. This is much dense. That means this community collaborate a lot. The link, the, there's a mathematical model to model this link strength is much higher because when this collaborate a lot, the strength of link is much higher. So when you think I want to do a marketing campaign, if this is a graph on, on my product, related to my product, who should I pick up the influencer? So you don't want to pick too many influencers here, even though they are influenced higher, they have a lot of connections, a lot, very active. If you look at the cloud score, we did that. All of the influencers are on this community. 
So then you saturate it. You, 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 know, you got the influencer here. You're trying to, the whole influencer campaign is about, you want the influencer to do the work for you, right? Through his social network power, do the work for you. So actually, for the awareness campaign, you want your information spread as fast as possible. Who is the guy, the key guy? These are the two key guys. What we call the strength of the weakest link. They are not, have a lot of interaction. They don't tweet a lot. They didn't have a lot of followers. But they are the bridge between the two communities. If this guy adopted, they were passing that information to this community. So that's the key. So that's why for marketing campaign, if you're doing awareness campaign, you want to rank, ranking your information spreader. This is your information spreader. So what is the call to action? Call to action is um, you, you, you submit a campaign, you have a link to it, or you want to say who is buying this product based on this coupon, right? Things like that. So then you want to purchase, that's much more trust. Or you, you are doing healthcare or the a weight loss program, that's lifestyle change. That kind of things is very hard to get these guys to convince this community to do a life, lifestyle change. So I know I'm, I'm short of the time, and this is the last slide. Okay. So what, so what do you do is you, you want to have a trust. Your influencer need to be, have a very strong linkage. Um, so then they have a more convincing persuasion power for your um, lifestyle changing kind of the product, like a, a weight loss. And so for the, you want to really drive the actions. Okay, so this is the key. I, hopefully, this is helpful for you guys to understand from a little bit technical perspective. An influencer is not equivalent. It's overused the term, asking yourself in what context, for what purpose. Okay, so we, we don't have time to go through all this. But, um, and so, uh, unfortunately, yeah, this is also we're looking at why Xerox doing that. So I want to show a little bit why Xerox doing that. So Xerox uh, is transforming to new, um, uh, new kind of business right now. We you recently acquired ACS, uh, a service business process outsourcing vendor. One of the things we do is um, we do different uh, verticals in the government, uh, in the healthcare, in the transportation. Easy Pass is belong to Xerox, right? And if you uh, and uh, do a lot of support, uh, BPO business process outsourcing. If you if you have iPhone or iPad. If you have an issue with the product, when you call 1-800, the support, customer care support, the people who answer the phone is Xerox employee. So that's kind of the things. What we're trying to help in them is really bring this social media that cannot be a silo. You have to integrate with your enterprise data warehouse. So bring you using the social media intelligence, you find out to augment your data, uh, enterprise data. So that's also big data issues. So we're dealing with big data issue, ethical issues as well, data privacy. Uh, how we preserving the data privacy while we fusing the data, augmenting the data into the enterprise data warehouse. So it's really next generation. We're looking at into the marketing campaign, marketing integrate with the customer care. And we talk about the community. I briefly talk about after you identify that community who is influencer, you have to, next question is how I grow that community. It's provide engagement. How you engage the influencer to grow that community. Influencer doesn't have to be your ad doesn't have to be your employee, right? So it has to be somebody cannot be branded. So how you engage with an uh, influencer to helping you grow your community uh, through the support and marketing campaign. So I know it's a quite short, but hopefully you get some useful things out from this. Um, I'm open for questions. So anything you, you feel like there's a, I know this is more technical, a little bit more technical. I try to bridging uh, relating to, to one of your, any of you here do marketing campaign? Or so loyalty program? Yeah, customer loyalty program. You're managing customer loyalty program. Did you looking at your uh, customer community, what online um, activities or how you link into your you know, customer loyalty program database into who is out there? might be the one who is already in your customer or maybe relate to your customer. Did you look in that kind of uh, questions on that? So why, why we differentiate ourselves? So we, ha we know we own our domain. Like we're working with a financial group, like American Express, the customer like Apple, so we support their product, or Microsoft. So we know their data. We have data, right? So we have a domain knowledge.
But if we apply the cloud, this general startup, this is pretty much general everything on the social media, it's just not working. But how can I customize that algorithm that we, we cannot customize? So there's a certain thing, you own your data. How you optimize it is really you have to identify your value propositions, right? If I want to get out of the insight from data by applying open source or startup tool, great. If you feel like you still need more, there's more things in it, you cannot do it. You have to develop yourself. That's the approach we, we are taking. So like influencer user. So, um, so what do we do is, uh, i just give you an example. Uh, so marketing campaign, you know Xerox Canada, I just went to with, uh, with their business folks uh, with several uh, clients, they do one-on-one -on -one marketing campaign. They print that the coupon, personalized coupon. So one of the key challenges for them is you know, the page volume is dropping. So, um, so where the advertisement money go? One to the social media, how can I bring it in? Right, that's the, that's the key questions for them. And one of the things with the printing is not dead because one of the printing things most reliable is the tracking. When you have a coupon, and you, when you scanned it, when you checked out, the company know exactly who did. This is coupon works. But when you're in the social media, you don't know. Like you said, I tweet 20 things and I, I retweet it. Does that mean you, you purchase things? We don't know. So this is something very hard to measure. So one of the things we, we also try to do is um, try to bring you in. So one of the uh, ideas we, we shared is about like Hurricane uh, Sandy. There's a, there's a forecasting by the uh, national weather forecasting. They already predicting the path of the Sandy in the, ahead of the five days. That is a huge amount of information. What you can do with that information, right? And then when a certain event happened, like one of the things we're helping for Apple support, right, the product, telecommunications support, they are tweeting about the, the power outage because the, the phone doesn't work or network outage. So we are actually detecting that event on the Twitter before the call center got called from customer because customer tweet about it first. Right? So this is a behavior change. So, so you, we have to really understand the behavior change, how we really adapting to this changing landscape. Right? So the Sandy, the same thing. Um, so Walmart proposed an algorithm. Looking at the Sandy path, the, their uh, C CMO said, what kind of the supply chain I need to adjust? What kind of the, uh, the warehouse things, uh, uh, the things I need to prepare for that? The same thing for the campaign. Looking at this, so this is just one weather data coming in, right? The social media data is a huge amount of data. We're using that to do customer care. We identify um, the issues for the product before the call center received. And we, the call center, when we're engaging on the Twitter, um, is much cheaper than the call center. So it's all the value propositions. So this is how I don't have time to go through all these ideas, but, um, but that, that's kind of the things we do. Um, there's more thing you can, you can do with, with the social media, and especially when you, um, in the big data, you bring the social media into your transaction data, tr historical transaction data, you can do a lot of different things. The op opportunity is, is massive, okay. All right, thank you very much. I hope I entertain you for 20 minutes. <laughs>